And this one's worth 150,000. In my eyes, yeah. Well, the last two sold for over 125,000. Oh no. <laughs> it's from the 70s. Yeah, we found it in a barn. All right, so the Power Stroke van is currently in the shop. We still have the old and trusty GMC Savannah. We had the seat. We took a seat on the Power Stroke van, and we had it like attached to the wall, but it was making Harrison car sick. So then, now, using only tank straps in the most precise places possible, there's, there's never been a safer seat uh, ever in any vehicle, any, anywhere. So, we got an email from a feller. What video, what, what, what video did we just do? They emailed us about that. We bought some old bike. You just did your CB video. Oh, he's after the CB, after the, uh, the CB video. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. Yes, it was a while ago. However, he said he didn't know we had a YouTube channel, which is super weird, because I was, a I think, I thought that, that was what he originally emailed us. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Yeah. So this is a big scam and we're getting uh, hijacked. Killed. Um, he said he's got a big warehouse full of motorcycles. That's some are for sale, some are not. Some what are else? worth a lot, some are not. Yeah, he said there's some bikes for as cheap as how much? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. And as expensive as? 150. 150,000. That's what he said. <laughs> So we're here, we're on site. I have no idea what we're gonna see here. We don't know this guy at all. Seems super cool. You know, That's Ford. I only have one one motorcycle head. Wow. That's all I think. Wow. What do you do here? Everything. I, I, I used to specialize in restoring, and I'm not restoring anymore. I'm doing more like resurrection. You know, oh, I just awesome. junkyard specials, and I bring them back from the dead, and I do everything. I've been from <coughs> antique airplanes to drag boats to motorcycles to cars to pickups to everything but a train. <laughs> I don't like trains. Wait, you're looking for a train. Okay. You know. <laughs> this has been an obsession since I was six years old. I've been doing this, and I'm 56 now. So I've been building bikes since I was old enough to hold a wrench. <coughs> wow. Yeah. That's awesome. But when I'm doing a proper restoration, I have a proper painter do it. So it's everything has to be spec. The stripes have to be the right width. Everything has to be done correctly to do a proper Harley, especially. Harleys are real critical. This was my last one. That's awesome. Pretty sad. It's always on the right side of the Harley Davidson or a medium for that matter. So tell us about this bike. This is a <clears throat> pretty much all original 1948 panhead that I <laughs> I got an engine and a frame from a friend and I started there. And then basically I just hunted <coughs> for everything. Every piece was swap meat found. Wow. Every piece. Now at some point, like, how do you even know what the piece looks like? Or well, what, there's what, pretty what? much a Bible for Harley Davidson's. It's called How to Restore Your Harley Davidson. Okay. And it's written by Mr. Palmer, and he's the guru. And he, he comes along with a whole plethora of knowledge, guys in the Antique Motorcycle Club. Um, we have an archives at Harley Davidson, and we legitimately look up all the details <coughs> right back to the date of production and everything. Oh, wow. So every ball, you know, <coughs> it's what the, the pros would call a nut and bolt restoration. Okay. So it's, it's really correct. Very few 
aftermarket parts on this motorcycle. Does this thing run right now? Absolutely. All these bikes run. Everything in here runs. So, because this is such an older bike, foot clutch, pan shift, so you got throttle, that. spark advance. Where's this is your spark advance here. That's your spark advance. Yeah, this is your throttle. That's foot, your foot clutch, and here's your shifter. Wow. <clears throat> so when it's nice out, you, you'll be daily driving a bike like this? All these. All these? <coughs> They're all runners. Really? Which one's your favorite to drive? They're all my favorite. All this favorite one is favorite. one of my favorite handling motorcycles. 1948 was probably the, one of the better years for the Harley frame fork configuration because of just how the geometry worked out. They, they just did a fantastic job on it. And what's, uh, what's something like this worth? Uh, a real 48. This one's been restored. Uh, I mean, they're getting upwards of 50,000 for them. That one's a 1954. <coughs> that's a unique bike. That's a, that's a celebration bike. That badge denotes that on the front. On the front. Super cool. 50 years? 50 years for that. 50 years for that. I didn't, wow. I didn't do a restoration on it. I Whoa. did a resurrection on it. Um, so resurrection is just kind of getting it running and rideable? Cleaning it up, doing all the maintenance, getting it running, doing the brakes. A restoration would have been re-chroming this and re-chroming it, right, everything, right? It's not going to get that because I ride it out of all my bikes. How much something like this for Uh Norton's have a wide range. This is a 750 <coughs> Combat. Was <coughs> In a lot of people's opinion, this 72 750 Combat was was a, their factory race bike, hmm. but it was street legal. It's a hot, especially with this Dunstall kit on it. This has a Dunstall exhaust on it, which you know, is about impossible to find. And I put the Corbin Gentry seat on it, and I put an aftermarket tank on it, which looks like the real tank. But um, it's very rideable, very fast. It's the fastest bike in this place. It'll just walk the blacktop. It's what, unbelievable. What kind of horsepower? Like 80 horsepower? <coughs> Probably right around there. Okay. Yeah, that is pretty quick for a bike. Like yeah, that. for a 750. Uh, it what? It weighs like 500. It's got long legs. It's geared, it's geared to go. It weighs probably like 530 pounds. Probably ish. less than that. Oh, really? Yeah. It, well, I'd say 500 pounds. Okay. This wow. <coughs> so it's an all original 38 knuckle. And it is restored. It is not unrestored. It is restored by me. And then, of course, I had it painted by someone. And this one's worth 150000 In my eyes, yeah. Well, the last two sold for over 125000 and that's without the 30% virus premium. So you do the math. And they were, were they in this good of shape? They were 1938s that were restored. And one wasn't restored as nice as this one. Do you ever do you ever drive this one? All the time. That's, that's so dope. That's so cool. That's a cool color. Venetian that color blue. Color is awesome. Was that a factory <coughs> color? It was, and it's dead not correct as far as the tone and everything is. Wow. A friend of mine had an original paint one, and we took his tail light off and did a color match with a photo chart from a paint shop guy where there was no ultraviolet rays. So we got the color dead on from Harley. That's awesome. So oh, what is this? That's a steering damper. That, this is a knob, basically, that, oh. that you loosen or tension to suit your ride. Wow. wow. Yeah, and you can do it for this, too. This is a, this is a dampener. See the knob down there? Yeah, yeah. That dampens the, the rate of fork oh, cool. travel. The this sports was a, bike of the time. This it, is the bike they were going to well, race. Well, it was the bike of the time. If right. you didn't have this, you had an Indian or you had one of the other American-made brands. Right. But at the in the thirties, there was two. There was there was Indian and there was Harley. Right. And they were they competed until 1953 when Indian closed the doors. Wow. Then Harley just went crazy. They had all the government contracts for military bikes, and of course the civilian bikes. During the war years, they didn't make many of all the steel went to war effort. So there were mm -hmm. war bikes, lots of them. Right. And some knucklehead war bikes, lot, very few of them. Most were flathead 45s and 74 cubic inch bikes. Mm -hmm. Flatheads were the workhorses. And it's pretty fast for a zero. <coughs> How 
How many cc's is it? It's a thousand. It's a sixty-one cubic inch. Would you consider this a, a fairly reliable bike? Oh, absolutely. I've had this bike everywhere. I was purchased locally here, and I knew everybody that owned it. It went through three owners here in the valley. What's the scoop with this? Uh, that is a nineteen forty-six Indian Chief. Is that is that a factory color? Actually, no. Mr. Dupont, if you bought a motorcycle from him and you had to have this paint scheme, which is the rainbow paint scheme, it was devised by a man named Mr. Stark. Well, Mr. Stark was out in the Midwest. Tony Stark? No. And <laughs> Mr. Stark was a master at his craft in the 40s hmm. at custom paintwork when nobody was doing custom paintwork. Now, Mr. Dupont, keep in mind, owned Dupont automobile, DuPont powder, DuPont paint. Right, everything. And he would have painted your motorcycle any <clears throat> color you wanted it if you had dollars. Well, if you ordered a rainbow paint scheme in 46, Mr. DuPont would have sent your tins out to Mr. Stark. He would have painted them, sent them back to the factory up in Springfield, and you would have got your rainbow chief. And that's what that is. What's a, what's a bike like that worth? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. 20,000, 20, 30,000, it depends. That's it. I was got a fresh motor. I rebuilt the motor, a friend of mine. <coughs> and what, what year is that? 1946. Why is that not? I mean, I. Like, like. Harley Davidson's bring, bring big money. Indians bring big money too, depending on the bike. The Chief was mass produced. They made lots and lots of them. So, if you so what do you want if you want an Indian uh, vintage? Indian? Like, what's the. What's if you're going to get a bike and you're going to ride it, you want a Chief. Right. That's what you want. You don't want to scout because they're, you know, you know, these are a thousand cc's. That was, you know, pretty custom for its era. You showed up at the movie theater in 1947 with that, with that rainbow scheme. You were kind of cool stuff back then. So none of these bikes have a uh, well, spot for a passenger. Well, that is. That's a buddy seat. Oh, it's a two-person seat. Yeah. Well. Harley Davidson called it the buddy seat. Okay. Indian called it the chummy seat. What is a speedway bike? Round and round in circles, no brakes. As soon as it starts, you're wide open throttle. Oh, and then you're getting sideways. You're sideways the whole time. <laughs> so so it's, it's like a dirt track bike. It's a round track bike. Yeah. Got it. Speedway. No brakes. You need brakes. You rip the you rip the kill switch and drag your feet. <laughs> is that? That's, like, that's the right peg. Is the exhaust normally on the ground like that? Well, yeah, because you're you're down like this the whole time. You're flat out wide open. Oh, and, and, and you're right, and you're going Your this whole way. Body's Yo, down did you see this degree angle? You see this back sprocket? It's giant. Oh yeah, it's so it's just one gear. Some guys hill climb these, or is it? Because there, yes, yeah, there are no gears. It's wow. just, just like, like a torque converter. Can, can I sit on it? Yes. I think it's awesome. And and he doesn't want that much forward. He wants like I don't know three grand, and it comes with some playing back there extra gearing and it's it's on top fuel too it's not gasoline <clears throat> that's a 72 TR6C and it's a daily one of my daily riders it's up and running and what's that AMF uh, Harley Davidson back there that is a SNS 350 era Maki Harley Davidson subbed those engines out to an Italian company named Aramaki and it was an entry level motorcycle that they did in the 70s. Is that a single? During the AMF era. Yep, single silver. They made a, two, they made a bunch of them. They made 175s, they made 200s, they made 350s. That's the biggest one there. Is it, so is that the only non V twin? That's the only non V twin Harley Davidson that I have other than the one you walked past and didn't notice, which mm -hmm. is the topper, which is right on the other side of this Honda four wheeler. Harley Davidson made a scooter. I think I knew that. About four years. Yeah. And it had a two stroke engine in it, very similar to the one that was in their golf carts. Oh, okay. And that's what's in the top, or a 165. Pretty rare little bike, you know. And that, and I have a factory sidecar for it, too. What? Oh, I, think, I thought I saw a sidecar sitting there. It's over there beyond the tire rack. And what is this? Oh, no. <laughs> It's from the 70s. Yeah, we found it in a barn and then uh, we just like on Monday and now we got it running. Is it a sidecar? That's a 1916 Indian sidecar. What is this piece? That's the topper cowling. 
There's a question for you. How come how come the sidecars didn't lean with the motorcycle? They, some of them did. Some of them did. Now, Re why, why wasn't Research that? flexi. Flexi, okay. With an eye. How come they stopped doing that? Because that seems to make more sense. To they, me. Some of them do, again. Uh, some of the more modern stuff. But but these are, when these are rigged right, they're they're castered in. So they so they plow just a little bit, okay. so that when someone's in the sidecar and someone's on a motorcycle, they're squared up because of the weight. Right. Hmm. There's the Harley Davidson topper. Oh, oh what the heck? That's a, is that's kind of like a Cushman? No, it's kind of like a Harley Davidson topper. <laughs> oh, it's like a Harley Davidson topper. <laughs> and that's got that single cylinder. Single cylinder, 165. <laughs> Pretty hot little bike. And is this is this very similar to the to their uh, golf cart? The engine was. That is one right there. Oh, that is an original golf cart right there. Oh, yeah. And the engine was similar. SL70. Well, Pretty desirable. Um, original paint. Real desirable for the Honda restoration guys. Especially the guys that are doing the minis. You know? mm, yeah. Which is coming back. Yeah, which is coming back. It's it's huge. Monkeys. This yeah. Trail 90 looks super nice. That's a runner. It was, I, I just drove it up there. Oh, really? Yeah, it runs. It's pretty awesome. You want to sell that one? Yeah. How much was that one for? Uh, I'd take 800 for it. It's worth 12. How fast will one of those go? Um. It's like 35, 40? Oh, uh, a little bit faster than that. Okay. More like 55. What's the speedometer say? It says. It says 80. Yeah, you're not going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe downhill. They're great. Like really big hills. These things are great for around here on the farm. Yeah. Can I fire this thing up? I doubt if it has a good battery in it. Well, I mean, oh, it won't start with uh, this with kick starting it? No, no, they're not They're not a, a magneto system. They're a they're an electric system. Hmm. Well, turn the key and see if it has battery. Right there to your left. I got it wired to the bike. Top, top of the brake there. Any lights? Any action? No. No, it's because the battery's dead. They, those things were, they were a great motorcycle. That one has the high and low transmission in it. Okay, I hear oh. people love these bikes. Oh, if you put that thing in low range, it'll, over it'll, it'll crawl. And you can crawl right up the side of a rock with it. And this thing, run, this thing runs good. Yeah, it runs great. That one runs great. Uh, <coughs> I got a, I just got a yellow one. I didn't get it running yet, but I was told it ran. And there's a red one back there that runs great. Hmm. That, is that a canteen on the back? Or is that yeah, and they're really hard to find. Really hard to find. You got an extra gallon of fuel if you're out in the bush. Really? Yep. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. I mean, they were, they were the 70s version of the Explorer uh, dual purpose bike that anyone could get on a ride. That one has a buddy seat on it too. Yeah. Oh yeah, put my wife on the back. Things yeah. awesome. this, one, this thing this thing street legal? Uh yes. What? <laughs> that is awesome. That's a cool bike. That yeah, it runs great. I ride it. Does that white one run too? Um I was told it did. I haven't started it. But it's what that's, is that? that's a JT1, just like that one. Hmm. Is this a um a six volt? Uh it's been converted to twelve. It was born six. Born six. And this thing still runs? Oh yeah. yeah. It goes down the road like like a Pontiac. Well, what's something like this worth? Um, five thousand the way it sits up and running, driving, stopping. And this would be fairly new exhaust on it. This would be fairly easy to keep running. Easier than anything you own. There's no computer here, man. You can go to the auto parts store and get anything you want under the hood. Same, Same spark plug runs that <coughs> ran all the lawnmowers back in the day. You know, mm. it's just there wasn't a whole lot of rocket science to these. And what, Unless uh, you broke the motor, <coughs> you could fix these things along the road. That was the beauty of it. Someone antiques. could. <laughs> well, it's <coughs> not you rookies that have only been around three years. <laughs> Where do I put the USB for it? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't exist here. I'm going to bring one of these home and be like, hey, Rachel, I got you a new car <laughs> to replace Fluid the drive. expedition. Fluid drive. <laughs> Way more practical. You just you take off with the clutch. Practical. Take off with the clutch Dude, and then shift by itself. It's just so yeah. cool looking. I need this. It's solid, isn't it? 
Just it is. Like it feels great. <coughs> Shush on the door and everything. You look like you. <coughs> right at home in that thing. <laughs> uh, so what is this? It's a 52 Pontiac Star Chief. Star Chief. No, that sounds no awesome. that's a Star Chief. This is, this a, is a Chieftain. 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 Hmm. This is Pontiac's <laughs> look at that. so awesome. very most popular model because of the waterfall hood. That stainless band that goes over the hood. Steel. <laughs> yeah, Not if you hit somebody with this, you're killing them. <laughs> and yourself. How much, is, kill yourself? Oh, no. How much asbestos is in this car? <laughs> no asbestos. All of it? That's not asbestos, that's felt. They didn't put asbestos in cars. They didn't put asbestos huh. in cars. That's awesome. Square four. It's the only square four engine configuration in the world that we know of. Does it have two different cranks? Or are they, it does. What? Two different cranks. <clears throat> it's in a square configuration. Wow. So what what the heck is it? It's a 1950 Aerial Square 4. Aerial? The British company? Aerial British. Same company that makes the Aerial Atom? I don't know what the Aerial Atom is. Hmm. Uh, Aerial made lots of stuff. They've been in business for Friggin' ever. <coughs> so I guess there was no, um, the square four just didn't uh, pick up, had no big benefits? Well, it sold for a lot of years, you know, th things get discontinued over the years, and this is one of the things that did, but it was real popular. Oh, there's the aerial badges was, right there. It was a motorcycle that a wealthy Brit would have owned, you know, a poor Brit probably would have had a single cylinder 350 or something. So let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's nothing's gonna leak out of it. There's nothing. How much was this? 850 bucks. 850. Dude, that's. Yeah, here's a monster. Awesome. Stop using the camera, bro, and help us out. <laughs> no, we don't need him. Uh, 850. We're gonna get home. This is gonna be doing like 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's worth 20. <sighs> no, I think the uh, it's, the Trail 90 is a pretty popular bike. Yeah. So, we were told this bike runs. Now, uh, from what we found out, my definition of that bike runs is a little bit different than his definition of that bike runs. I think what he means is the engine's not seized up or it ran the last time they rode it. It's, according to this Pennsylvania sticker, the last time it was registered was 1974. October 31st, 1974. What is that? That's like 50 some years. Uh, so what we're gonna do, and I'm sure it runs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna uh, replace the plug, take out all the fuel, replace the fuel lines, clean the carburetor, swap the battery. Yeah, it's probably gonna need a new battery. Put a new battery in it. Um, we don't need that, but we'll probably clean that out. And probably we should probably put new oil in it. That would yeah. make sense. We'll put new oil in it. And I think at that point we'll be able to ride this thing. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped. I'm pretty excited about it. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. Now we are having some issues with the battery, um, finding it and then trying to charge one. But let's go for it. Let's go. Go. Go down. 